What's up guys? Welcome back. Like, subscribe, comment, or connect depending on what platform you're watching this on. And um, I hope you enjoy. This is my Sunday video and I still haven't exactly decided what I want to do with that. Um, but I'm just kind of like free flowing with it right now. So sometimes I get A-OKs. -OK That's when I would open them on the Sunday video. Um, you know, sometimes people reach out to me and they want me to review their comic. Um, so, you know, I try to read those and that's where I'll put the reviews. And so I was fortunate enough that somebody reached out to me, um, about their like independent comic. They have four issues out, um, or they're actually labeled as episodes, but, uh, they have four of them out so far. So they passed those on to me. And, um, I read through them and I really enjoyed them. So, the artwork on this is, uh, done by Zero, I guess it's Zero Z. And, um, it's really cool artwork. I'm excited to talk about that. But the book is written by Manny Shape. And, uh, that's how I got my hands on this. And that's who asked me to do this review for a book called El Crudo. This was a blast. So, the first issue is called Enter, Enter the Sausage Grinder. And this is where you kind of get introduced to El Crudo. Um, it's, he, okay, so the way the first issue set up, it, it's, um, it reminds me of like Suicide Squad. Um, in the sense that like you get introduced to like the American military fighting in Vietnam. And, um, you know, so that's already, like, pretty cool stuff, you know. Um, you get, like, this crazy violence, and a lot of what you see there is the, um, a lot of what you see there is, like, the military, like, the main figureheads, and they're trying to figure out what to do because they're not really doing well in Vietnam. And so, of course, they, um, have this secret project going on where they have this, um, you know, they have a an ape that they're going to send in. And, and at first, they have, like, a special team. Like, they had this squad go in. They got their butts kicked. And so now they, like, have this special squad that they could send in. But instead, they decide to exp to send in this, um, like, experimental uh, weapon in development, you know. And they're saying, like, the, the brass at top wants to see some returns on investment. So... This is the first time they're really testing this project in the field as we come to understand it. Um, and so that's part of the reason they choose to go with this. But it's also got, um, you know, some other Suicide Squad elements. And, like, you know, they, they kind of set it up and let you know why this character needs to be here. Um, maybe even, like, Escape from New York style, you know. Like, you need to understand why this character is being sent in and the reasons. Um, and most importantly, that the government is... Um, interested in severing ties like this is not something that's supposed to make the news this is not something people are supposed to know about but um they're gonna send them in and they're they're just as content with killing off whatever this project is and um you know cut ties erase connections you know so that's pretty cool because they send in this orangutan and this is when the the or the the first issue really kicks off. The second half of the issue, um, you're introduced to uh, El Crudo, and he parachutes in in one of the coolest scenes I've ever seen. And um, I think it's a really cool style of artwork because most of the time I imagine this in live action with like a CGI orangutan, kind of in the vein of something like. Um, uh, the Planet of the Apes movies, you know, like very realistic looking stuff. Like what if an ape could really do this kind of thing? Um, but, but then some of the violence is a little over the top and there are moments where things seem slightly exaggerated like a cartoon. And then there's also these other really interesting, uh, shifts in tone and style, um, that I'm excited to get to. But in the first issue, you see this orangutan, he parachutes in, in the coolest way, 
uh, possible. You'll see it in, in this video I'm going to put in here somewhere. Um, you do get to see it in, in uh, like in motion kind of. Um, but what I really like the about the style here is that there's a lot of scenes in here that kind of just feel cinematically in motion. And that's not to say the rest of the comic doesn't feel like a comic like um or you know like it, it doesn't feel like this was in any way created for cinema like not that somebody's looking for a movie deal out of this um as well as it would play out but there are these like sequences that are very cinematic in style and they kind of feel like they're in motion and one of those is the first time he parachutes in the way he comes down is just um and then he just like he, he woke up and chose violence. Like, he comes in, he parachutes in, and he starts murdering people. And uh, he's just, like, swinging through the trees of Vietnam, just blah, 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 blah. Dude's good with the gun. We see him uh, a little bit later. He's great with the machete. Um, it, it's just crazy, like, how he comes in. Very action-packed and, and just super cool and very fluid. Like, um, a lot of times, um, the way that... Uh, Zero Z is using um, the paneling for really cool like wide action scenes right because you got this ape like it kind of reminds me of Spider-Man and the way you would have to create the the motion and the layout um, because he's swinging through these trees a lot and so what you'll get is these really cool ghosting sequences with these hard lines in the panels that really just um, kind of exaggerate the amount of time that's being um, portrayed you know and so it makes for really cool dynamic action where um the pacing is actually kind of up and down in the action scenes but it never feels bad like it doesn't feel stop and go it just feels like this monkey like swings and it feels like slow motion and then when he hits and he starts shooting and stuff like you're back in real time just for him to swing off and kind of slow-mo again um it, it's almost like a matrix type of effect um in a book you know and so this first issue is really cool like um it feels a little slow in the first part because you're just like kind of understanding why this character needs to be in this situation um but once you hit the halfway point and he falls out of that plane like things come unchained quick and um so i really like that you know and it's really cool and then you go into issue two and it changes and it is a different book in some ways because what you come to find out is that this is an existential ape that has a drug problem um in issue two we get into like the the war in vietnam a little bit more um and we get specifically this book is exploring the part of the vietnam war that dealt with like um the soldiers with access to the opium and the heroin and stuff like that um, this ape, he smokes, he drinks, he, um, does opium, um, he's very much into it, um, but he's really existential, and honestly, it kind of reminds me, I know people are going to challenge me on this, and so it's hard to say exactly what I mean by this, but if you understand, you understand, um, there's a lot of internal dialogue, dialogue in here, and, you really get inside the head of this creature that's been trained to be a total warrior, but he also has a drug problem, and you really get into the head. There's a lot of internal dialogue, and so honestly, like it feels a lot like how Alan Moore explores Swamp Thing as a character um, in his uh, 1980s Swamp Thing run. Maybe it's just because that run is fresh on my mind because I just recently read it. But I really like the way that this character is dealing with this existential dread and just completely sucks you into his mind, you know. And so where issue two picks up is basically the military cutting ties and trying to make sure that like this doesn't come back on them. And meanwhile, El Crudo is stuck behind enemy lines in Vietnam um, and then, like I said, he has a drug problem. He needs opium. So he goes and finds him some opium. Um, he gets some cigarettes, you know, and as he's doing these things, there's kind of some crossing of storylines. So you get a little bit more on like Vietnam and the Vietnamese and the Viet Cong and how they're 
coping with this war from their perspective as well. Um, and so you see a lot of El Crudo, he's like hanging out in trees and <laughs> trying to find opium and he's rolling up tobacco cigarettes with opium shredded up and placed in it. And um, it's just really impressive. And again, this is where the art just like, <sighs> it's really good, you know, but there are moments, a lot of the action and stuff gets super exaggerated, but it's really cool. And I really like it. And um, I will say, issue four kind of comes, issue four came a little left field, you know, because we, we've seen this character um, dealing with his drug problems and stuff. And um, it's worth noting he burns down an entire um, facility, like an entire, uh, an opium farm. Like he burns down this whole opium farm and um, it's... I don't know, it's a, a beautiful illustration of miscommunication and um, subservitude, you know. So he breaks, he, he burns down this farm, this opium farm, and that really um, ticks off the Viet Cong. So now he has an enemy specifically targeting him. And, and at the point that we know, he doesn't exactly know that, they don't know they're looking for this orangutan. They just know somebody burnt down one of their most profitable opium farms, and so they're going to find out who it is, and they find evidence that it's an American. So they think that they're looking for an American GI, and um, they do not know yet what exactly they have to deal with. Um, and, and there's also other little nuggets of information spread throughout the story that gives a little more history on where El Crudo came from and how he became the killing machine that he is. And um, kind of connects a lot of the dots as to his um, addictive, uh, you know, his addictions and his afflictions. So all that's really cool. And then uh, issue four kind of comes out of left field um, because it takes you on this almost like fantasy style adventure. And it's a real trip. Like it's really cool. And it, for a minute there I was a little lost. And then as it, the story kind of like coalesced and came back together i realized like how genius this was because it's basically a, a drug trip you know um el crudo is drinking the or he's smoking opium and so he's having a trip and so you get to learn not only do you get to learn about all these different facets of this extremely complicated character i mean we're talking about an orangutan that is just a murder machine with the drug addiction. But again, he's so multifaceted. He's a really interesting character. And I really like to see how this plays out. Um, and I'm really excited for number five. Because, I mean, you just... Oh man, there's so many cool things here. And again, like I said, it's not... I don't want to compare him to Alan Moore. But at the same time, like the way he explores the character. Because... You go on this opium trip, and it is, like, next level. But it really puts you in, gives you an explanation to the character. And I don't think that can be ignored. Like, it's, it's you know, rated R material by all means. Like, I don't think children should be reading this. But I think anybody that's really interested in, like, the psyche and the character breakdowns that you can get um, through something like substance abuse is just absolutely incredible i've never been that interested in the vietnam war itself but this really makes it interesting because of how well portrayed this story is um where it's not really painting vietnam as the bad guy it's just um you know painting factions against each other and so i think it's cool that it's not really trying to say anything about the war itself just the circumstance and so this is a really cool story. I really like these first four issues I uh, read. And um, I think it offers a lot. If you like Swamp Thing, I think this will really interest you. Because it's, you know, it's an ape with some existential dread, you know. The the world has been very hard on him. His, start, his story is very uh, long and kind of downtrodden, you know. And um, I think it's interesting. I really like this character. I really want to see more. And um, I hope that more people read it. So thanks for watching me ramble about um, this book. It's called El Crudo. And it's uh, written by Manny Shape. The artist is Zero Z. And um, they did have some guest artists on the fourth issue. 
Um, but for the most part, this seems like it's all 100% coming from Manny and Zero. So um, I would say check this out. Look these guys up. Manny got a hold of me on the uh, because of the Discord, uh, the Comic Burrito uh, Discord. I'll go ahead and leave a link to that. I've never really um, invited anybody to a Discord, but um, it's a great community. And this is one of two people that have actually talked to me recently about doing a review for their books or something like that um, because of Discord. So it's a great community. If you're not on Discord, then you should be. If you are on Discord but you're not part of the Comic Burrito Discord, I would highly suggest it. Those guys and uh, the Wednesday Pool, Wednesday Pool List, um, they have a Discord server as well that I spend a lot of time in. So um, if I'm not answering your messages somewhere, it's probably actually because I'm in those Discords and so caught up in arguing with um, a lot of the great people in there about comic books and comic related things. So um, hit that link. I'll leave that in the bio. And um, you know, other than that, like, subscribe, comment, share connect and uh, let me know if you've read this series let me know and um, I'll put all the links and everything for all the creators for where you can get this book they have a website I know where you can buy it and um, I think it's a, a great book that everybody should check out so until next time keep flipping pages